Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com and today I've got a good one. We're going to learn how to do Listen to the Music by the Doobie Brothers. Uh, now this was a good rhythm guitar workout. It's got a lot of really cool riffs, instantly recognizable too. So even some kind of Hendrixy kind of chord work in there as well. I'm going to go through all the sections kind of as they appeared on the original recording. I'm not going to do any of the solo work, but just all the, the, the rhythm work. And it's, uh, but it's, it's, it's a nice workout even just doing that. Now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell so you can know at least a new video. Kind of like and comment the videos. It really helps. And uh, what really helps more than anything is actually for you guys to check out my Guitar Academy. It uh, contains all of my guitar courses. One subscription gets you access to all of my courses, personalized support from me, uh, access to all of my live streams that I do every weekend with just Academy members. So it's a, it's a really great community hopefully you'll come and join us get a free seven day trial by clicking that link below all right so let's jump into this um now we're going to start here with this intro uh which is um so you're going to see when i'm doing this we kind of have that main riff and then there's like i think there's like three guitar players in the band so they come in and we start kind of filling up the sound a little bit and have some of the bass notes added, uh, which could just be done with just chord work. Um, I'm going to try to put it together so we can kind of really make it sound good as just with one guitar. So when I go into this, what you saw in the intro, when I did this kind of rhythm figure, but then I ended up adding the bass notes. That might be kind of a combination of a couple of different, um, what a couple of different guitar players are doing there. Uh, because one might just be doing the straight riff without the bass notes, just to make it really funky. But I'm gonna put them together. All right, so we're gonna, we do start without the bass notes though. So what's going on here is you're gonna uh, bar the ninth fret across the B, G, D, and A string. So the four middle strings. So bar that, and when you, as you strum that, you're gonna hammer on the 11th fret there on the A string. And then we get to the chord that we actually, where you actually wanna strum that chord. And then you can kinda of do that figure again. And then you're gonna go over to an one bass, so this is an E, based off of an E becomes an E in um, first inversion when you do the hammer on. And then here we uh, do the same thing, but we're kind of going from an E chord to an A. So now this is gonna be still barring at the ninth fret, but just across the B, G, and D. So, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna strum those three strings and then hammer on the 10th fret on the B and the 11th fret there on the D. And when you hammer on, it becomes a A major triad. So we have this. And then go over to the A. And then at the very end, you go back and just hit the nine across the D, G, and the B. Uh, one more time before you go back to start the whole figure over. So it goes. So back to that little bar, and then we just start over. So after a couple of times of playing it, we have the full band that comes in, and that's when I start adding the bass notes. You can choose to do that if, uh, if, you, if you want, but I think it kind of makes it sound a little bit fuller. And you still have the same thing going on top, so we're still doing that riff, but instead of just hitting those strings, I'm gonna add the low E in there too. Everything else is the same, just kind of, it's a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna incorporate the low E string in there. And then, likewise, when you go to that A, do that kind of A hammer on, you're gonna have the A string, open A string in the bass. So. From there, 
after you've done that riff a little bit when the vocals come in, I was trying to hum them. I don't know the lyrics. It goes to a C sharp minor chord. So it has, has this. So that is a full bar now at the ninth fret. It's going to be a C sharp minor chord. Full bar at the ninth, and then you're going to have the, on, in front of that bar, you're going to have the, the 11th fret on the A and the D. Take that down to the B major. So you just go down two frets. Same chord form, but you're going to add the eighth fret there on the G string to make it uh, a, um, a major chord. And then here I'm gonna play this next chord kind of like a Hendrix chord thumb style here. Why? Because of that. I wanna kinda of keep the bass note going, but I wanna I wanna play that make it bring it up from an A major chord to an A sus four chord. So easiest way to do that really, we have the uh, you can just do the you know you have to do the, the thumb if you don't if you don't want to, but I believe they do. So we have the open A string if you want, just to make it easy. Seventh fret there on the um, D string, sixth fret there on the G, and then you're gonna bar the fifth fret across the B in the high E string. So that's just a regular A major with this open A string in the bass. And from there you can just go hammer on. The, uh, the seventh fret there on the G string. So that kind of incorporates that. So you can add that A in the B here too, kind of double the open A or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. So we have this. Okay, so I'm gonna A for a little bit and then Go up to that sus, and then back down to the A, so. And then. So back to that riff, and then it goes back to the verse again. Kind of starts the verse over. Now here, when it, set, it looks like it's getting ready to start the verse over again after this, kind of second time through it, it goes up here and starts with that, starts that E hammer on, but the second time through, it jumps from there to the chorus. All right, so the chorus looks like that. So um, it's gonna start here. I'm gonna do this instead of this C sharp minor here. Sounds closer to this voicing of it. Plus we have this kind of other stuff that got and goes on with it too. Um, so it makes more sense to kind of play this down here, especially with just like kind of a one guitar arrangement. So we're gonna start with this C sharp minor chord played here at the fourth fret, which is a, a bar from the high E string across to the A string in the fourth fret. And then in front of that bar, you're gonna play the fifth fret there on the B, six on the G, six on the D. From there, we're gonna go over to an A major chord. So it's the same, uh, we can just do a regular full bar chord version like we did here at the B, just down here at the fifth fret. So. go back and forth between that C sharp minor chord and the A like three times. Then it goes, as you, you can keep playing this a, uh, this bar chord sh shape, this major bar chord shape, but down at the second fret to make an F sharp. So 
that's down at, at the second fret there. So we have this. Last little thing I did is based off of an A chord. So after this F, you're gonna jump up here, and I'm gonna start with this, the open A string there. I'm gonna try to let that A string ring out as much as possible. Um, so we have this open A, and you can start with this seventh fret there on the uh, D string as well. But um, what you're gonna do is the sixth fret there on the G, and then the open B, open high E with it. With it. Now there's a melody that happens on the G string. So um, let's just check out that melody real quick. So we're gonna have the uh, set, you're gonna have the open B and open high E with it each time. Sixth fret on the G, four, two, four, then back to six. So that's. And then the second time through, it stops on the four on the way up. It stops on the four when you're gonna go back to the um, verse. So it is. Now if you can, mute that D string with the index finger or kind of trace it with a finger kind of muting that D. So you can have the open A string kind of, you're hitting that as well. So I'm able to keep that A going. I'm just muting that D string with it tip of my index finger. So it is. Something like that. Well, I was muting it. And then it goes back to. All right, so um, that's pretty much the, uh, the chorus there. Now the chorus does have kind of an interesting rhythm to it. Um, it's like. So there's a lot of missed strums when you, on the kind of the very beginning of the pattern. So we have this. So I'm doing like a down, and then I'm missing an up and a down. And then I'm gonna hit an up. And then it's the same thing, I miss the next two strums. And then, then it's kind of more straightforward, down, up, 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 down, up, kind of more a common pattern. So I have this. And then the same thing on each chord. Now, you guys know me. I don't do a lot of strumming patterns on this channel because I feel like it's, it's more naturally played if you can feel it. So if you can just hear, if you first of all get your, your hand moving in this, in like kind of at that proper tempo, like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's, as soon as, once you have that consistent and it doesn't stop, then you basically just use your ear to be able to dun, dun, da, dun, dun, da, dun, 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 dun. I'll kind of like do it in the string. That's how you should do strumming patterns. If you analyze them, you lose the feel of it, you overanalyze it, and you have issues with rhythm. If you just mimic what you hear and have your hand set in the proper motion, uh, this continual kind of uh, momentum going down here, just like it, like it's a metronome, uh, the pattern is just gonna fall into place naturally. And that is how you wanna kind of tackle 99% of the rhythms that you come across. All right, so that's basically uh, what's going on. Uh, get back to this breakup. say um, at the end of the song when we go when it just kind of repeats the chorus um, we that melody when it keeps going to six it keeps doing it so it goes back to the six if it's gonna go back and repeat that 
repeat the course again. It only stops at the four. Stops at that four if it's going to back to the verse. All right, so uh, we basically go through the verse to the chorus and then back to the verse and back to the chorus again, nothing new there. And then we have this bridge section, which kind of has a little bit of Hendrixy chord work in it. So it looks like this. So it's going to start with that E, that E chord we did. So just that ninth fret bar across the B, G, and the D, 11th fret there on the A, and then the uh, open E. All right, then it's going to, going to go to a D major chord right here. So that's going to be the 10th fret here on the uh, low E string, 12th on the A, 12 on the D, 11 on the G. And then we have our first little little Hendrix lick. You're gonna slide up from 12 to 14 on the low E. Then you're gonna bar the 12th fret across the A and the D. When you do that, pick those two notes and hammer on that 14th fret there on the A string. And then go back to the 12 on the across the A and the D. Then back over to the 12th fret across the E and the, and the A. Actually, you just kind of hammer 12 to 14 on the low E, I believe. Like that. So we have this. So it's a fill bass over that D chord. And then it goes to an A major triad, that same that we did in the uh, verse, which is open A string, 11th on the D, 9 on the G, 10 on the B. And it leads us back to the A, after the E chord, I'm sorry. So that's gonna be a hammer on, after you, after you play that A chord, gonna, you're gonna, gonna hammer on nine to 11 on the D real quick, back to the nine, and then slide from 11 to, uh, sorry, nine to 11 on the A string. And to the ninth fret there on the D, so with this. And then just kind of strum the chord again. So. Now we're on the final chord. And it kind of does kind of the same lick. So you have the E and then you can play the ninth fret on the D and the G real quick. And then that same hammer on from uh, nine to 11, back to the nine. So I'm kind of incorporating that, that top note a lot here. But I'm doing the kind of the same lick. And then that same slide on the A to the ninth fret there on the D. So it is. So all together, first time through the chords, we have this. Just go to the D, same little, little Hendrix look you could do there. It gets kind of buried in the mix there under the vocal, so it's really hard to see, help, tell if he's doing the exact same uh, riff there. I didn't isolate the guitar track or anything. But then from there, we just go to that A major chord and just kind of continue to strum that. No more fills. It kind of builds back up to the chorus. All right, and that is it for the bridge. Goes back to the... Uh, the Back to the chorus, and like I said, this is the extended chorus. This is the one that kind of repeats, so that melody is going to be... Always go back to six. Six, four, two, four, six. Six, four, two, four, six. And you will be all set. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's actually a really fun song to play. Instantly recognizable when you just do it. It's 
a fun one. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.